So after you have defeated Stalord and exited onto the rooftop of the Arbiter's Grounds, you will find yourself in this open area. You want to follow the broken stairs up into the circles around and leads up to this new location. I think it's cool looking here, it's all ruins and such, and for some reason there's random torches that are lit even at night. <laughs> now as you get up to the very top, you'll find a large open area called the Mirror Chamber. You want to start walking towards the very large statue of what I presume to be the Goddess of the Sand that the Gerudos worshipped. Now once you get anywhere near it though, some twilight barriers will block your way and a portal will then appear in the sky, this time dropping five of those shadow beasts or twilight messengers, whatever you want to call them, rough. <laughs> now they can be pretty annoying, but now that we have the Master Sword, they're actually incredibly easy to dispatch in short order. A jump attack or a spin attack will kill them in one hit. I recommend singling out the ones that are far apart, and just make sure you have enough distance between you and the others that you don't, uh, you know, that when you perform, perform a slash or jump attack, you don't hit the others at the same time. Once you have two left, you want to use a spin attack, or you can transform into a wolf and use them in this charge attack to defeat the remaining ones. As you can see here, I wasn't close enough to the one on the right, so I had to start over again. Lesai. Also be warned that there are some keys that are against the walls here in this area, so uh, they're on either side of the entrance, so if you get too close, they will start coming after you. Once you have defeated them all, it'll burst into blue-green twilight stuff, and then form the war portal for this location. If you were hurt at all fighting the shadow beings and such, you can grab some recovery hearts and stuff that are lying around, and then head over towards the statue in the middle. You'll see that it has rails attached to it, how convenient. You want to latch onto them using our newfound spinner, and go up along the snake that is along the outer side of the statue. You will snap into place of a mechanism thing at the top. You want to use your spinner repeatedly in order to lower the statue that you are standing on into the sand. This causes the large pillars that are surrounding the area to rise, and because they are attached by chains, this will lift a large black stone out of the ground. Uh, along with a platform that comes out of the sand as well. So these will come important here in just a moment we'll be able to use them. So now that we have the warp portal for this location, we can actually warp back here and return to the uh, boss chamber where we fought Stalord. So if for some reason you did not grab the heart container, then you can actually grab that now. I don't understand how anybody could actually miss that, but if you did, you now have a great opportunity after this movie is done to go and grab that. Anyway, that all being said, You'll see then see Link is standing here admiring the scenery and Minda is floating at his side. She rushes over to the platform that has risen out of the sand and stares in horror at what remains of the Mirror of Twilight. Well, poopy, like a big chunk of it is missing. <laughs> That's no good. Was it destroyed? What happened to it? After a moment, Minda will show her angry face. Grrr. And next we'll see her all depressed and leaning over the, the mirror all, no. And Link is just standing there looking awkward. <laughs> After a moment, however, Link will realize that he's not alone as he looks up and finds the five sages are watching them. Don't worry, these are good guys, and they're about to give us a better look at just what's going on. Though it's not really important, you can actually see the symbols for the elements that each sage represents on the pillars that they're standing on, as well as on their garments. It doesn't really change anything, but it is cool to note they're the same elements that were uh, from Ocarina of Time. Now they explain that there's an evil power that is within the twilight, no duh, and they also continue to ramble, saying that you are the chosen hero. No kidding, we already know that. <laughs> they go on to say that the sages were commanded by the goddesses to guard the mirror of twilight, and though you have come to use it, this ancient uh, power and such, it has been broken up into several fragments and scattered by mighty magic. It is the same dark power that an ominous he possesses, and the final sage would dramatically reveal the name of the main antagonist of the Zelda series and of this game, Ganondorf. A clip then takes place in which they explain some of the history behind Ganondorf, and how he was the King of Thieves, otherwise known as the Gerudos, who tried to establish a dominion over the Sacred Realm and gain access to the legendary Triforce left behind by the three goddesses. This is very similar to the story of the Dark Interlopers that uh, Lanero told us about, but we will find out later that they are different, so don't confuse Ganondorf and the Gerudos with the Dark Interlopers in the Twilight, they're different people. Um, so Ganondorf, on the other hand, he was called the Demon Thief, a ruthless and very powerful wizard who could wield a terrible and deadly magic. The sages explain, however, that for all his power, Ganondorf was blind because of it. Yes, he was powerful and quick and full of anger and arrogance and such, uh, but thus he exposed himself to danger heedlessly. He would go into situations, you know, blatantly just being all powerful and laughing at everybody, and because of that, uh, it was his weakness. This allowed them to subdue him and bring him to justice because he was blind to any danger to him. So this is the second blatant execution mentioned in Twilight Princess, you know, the first being Queen Rutella, and which is, once again, a little bit different and intense for a Zelda game. They haven't really had executions in previous Zelda titles. Now this is also the first Zelda title to have this particular sword in it, the Sword of the Sages, uh, so it has yet to be mentioned in any other Zelda titles, so it's kind of unknown what its intended purpose and uses are, uh, unless its only use is to execute people, because this is the first time we've ever seen it. 
Now, although the sage is intended to put an end to Ganondorf, um, he had gained access to the power chosen by the gods, the Triforce. So, by doing so, this makes Ganondorf all that more difficult to defeat, and in some cases nearly impossible. Being already incredibly powerful, and also being nearly immortal, now makes Ganondorf a really intense opponent. Uh, so he managed to break free and actually kill one of the ancient sages. And so now he actually also has the Sword of the Sages, so he has a ton of things going for him already. <laughs> He's going to be really hard to defeat. So the others had to do something quick, lest Ganondorf kill them all and rampage across Hyrule all over again, because they already like barely managed to defeat him, or kind of defeat him anyway. <laughs> so now they have to do something really quick. So they use the evil power of the Mirror of Twilight as a last resort to seal Ganondorf away within the land of the Twilight, previously known as the Dark Interlopers. So in the process, the Sword of the Sages uh, gets sucked into the Twilight Realm as well, so that's lame. <laughs> So this will seal Ganondorf away for a time, but as you can already tell, this is not going to be the last we're ever going to see of him. Now in previous Zelda titles, there have been other sages who have died as well, but it has never been witnessed before like this, making this the first Zelda game where we have actually seen the demise of one of the sages. Also, this is the only Zelda title where the sages have had such an odd appearance. In past titles, they have looked more like regular people, but in this one, they're all disconnected from their body parts and all glowy and stuff, kind of like Rayman or something. <laughs> With that history lesson out of the way, our perspective changes back to the present, where the sages are explaining that they presume the evil power that Zant now possesses is actually that of Ganondorf, which makes him a very formidable foe indeed. Minda scolds them, saying that it doesn't matter where he got his power from at this point, because it's too late to stop him. The sages say, however, that only the true ruler of the Twilight can break the Mirror of Twilight for good. This is because the mirror was probably created by the rulers of the Twilight, or rather the Dark Interlopers, in ancient times. Because of this, Zant can only break up the Mirror of Twilight into pieces and scatter them across Hyrule. Essentially, this means we have a few more dungeons before we can actually face Zant. The sages also vaguely know the locations of the missing shards in the snowy mountains, in the hidden grove, and one in the heavens, whatever that means. They go on to say that Link is the only one who can gather and reassemble the Mirror of Twilight, however they warn you that the pieces contain evil power. Because they were also forged by the Dark Interlopers, they are very similar to the few shadow that we've been gathering earlier, meaning that they will corrupt anything near them just like the bosses of the first three temples we conquered. Now that concludes this video guys, and it also concludes this chapter. Speak with Minda and warp on over next to Castletown, and I will see you guys for the next video. Toodles! Thank <laughs> you.